In this tutorial, we are going to demonstrate how to insert citations and manage a bibliography or reference list in Microsoft Word using EndNote X7. On the screen, I have Microsoft Word 2016 loaded, and in the background here, I've got EndNote loaded. In EndNote, we've got the demonstration EndNote database that we created in a previous tutorial containing five references. In my Word document, I've already typed in some text. This is just nonsense text, but it gives me the opportunity to insert citations as I go along. When you've installed Microsoft Word and EndNote on your computer, EndNote will automatically add a menu item, and this is listed here as EndNote X7. If you click on this word, you will see now a new menu has appeared in Microsoft Word pertaining to the use of EndNote for referencing. The menu contains a number of buttons, probably the most important of which is the Insert Citation button, but there are also buttons that allow you to open EndNote, as we just have done here, edit and manage your citations, edit your library preferences, change the style in which you are formatting your bibliography, and also change various other options. In most cases, leaving things at the default setting is a good place to start. One of the great things about using EndNote to insert citations is that it doesn't matter what format your bibliography is in when you start inserting citations because you can change this as a later date and your bibliography, reference list and in-text citations will automatically update as they go along. One of the settings that is quite important is the instant formatting. If you want to insert citations and have it generate a bibliography automatically as you go along, it's best to leave instant formatting turned on. If your computer is running quite sluggishly with this setting turned on, I would recommend you turn it off. It does involve quite a lot of processing power to insert citations and manage your database on the fly. This doesn't mean you won't be able to create a bibliography, but it means you'll have to create it manually, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. For the moment though, we will leave instant formatting on. There are a couple of ways of inserting citations in Microsoft Word using EndNote. One is manually, by selecting the reference in your EndNote database from within EndNote and then inserting it, or from searching within your EndNote database from within the EndNote plugin in Microsoft Word. I'll show you both methods now. So I'm going to the end of the first sentence and I want to insert a citation. So I'm going to go to my EndNote database and select the paper I wish to cite. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to work my way down this citation reference list. I go back into Word and I choose Insert Citation, Insert Selected Citations. Immediately, Microsoft Word would insert a citation for the first paper, which is Bell Kennington et al. from 2007, 2008, sorry, and it puts it in a bracket because that's the format that happens to be selected at the moment. And immediately down the bottom, it's inserted a section called Reference List and put the full citation for this paper. The second way of inserting a citation is to click on the Insert Citation button without clicking on the little drop-down list, and this time it'll bring up a search box. I can type in a name in the search box, click Return, and I can find papers. So for instance, if I want to find a paper by Nicholas Smart, I do a search for Smart, and there the paper comes up. So I'm now going to cite this paper, but I'm not going to cite it here, I'm going to cite it a bit further out. So I've cited one paper in the first sentence, and I'm going to cite another paper at the end of the second sentence. So insert citation, I found that paper, and I press insert. It inserts the second citation, and immediately down the bottom inserts the reference list. Don't worry about the formatting of the reference list at the moment, we're going to change that in a minute. Let's just insert the citations first. So there's a new fact here which requires referencing, so let's put another citation in there. Insert citation, this time I'm going to look for a paper by web and insert that one. There it's cited. Okay, so we're moving on and later in our article we want to recite a paper we've cited earlier. So here's another sentence which refers back to the same published article I've already referred to. So let's re put another citation in to the Bell and Kennington paper. So we type in here, Bell, find the paper and insert it. 
It's inserted the Bell Kennington et al. 2008 citation. And the last one, I'm going to cite a number of papers. So I'm going to insert citation, do a search for Clark, for instance, and I'm going to cite these three. No, let's do those three papers and insert them. Immediately what it's done is it's combined the three references into a single parenthesis and put them at the end of the sentence. And if you now look in the reference list, it's added all of the citations to the reference list. You're probably wondering how I changed the format of this. Well, this is where the EndNote X7 plugin that works in Microsoft Word comes to its own. Up the top here, I said there were some buttons to familiarize yourself with. This middle section where it says style is the formatting style of these references. All journals, all manuscripts have their own formatting style. Nature, for instance, has the way it likes to do it. American Journal of Physiology has its own way of doing it. And the database that comes with EndNote when you install it includes a lot of the popular journal styles. And if you can't find the one you want, most journals allow you to download their referencing style from their website. So for instance, in my drop down list here, I've got a list of the most common ones that I use. At the moment, it's set to author date. In other words, it just cites the authors et al with a date. And then it lists them in the reference list in alphabetical order. It's a very standard way of doing it. However, I fancy doing it in the style of the Journal of Physiology. So I'm going to click on Journal of Physiology. You can see immediately that it's reformatted the document. It's changed the way the citations look, and it's also changed the reference list, and it's in alphabetical order. If I go and change it to numbered, again, it's changed it once more, and now it's listing it in chronological order as they appear in the journal in the paper. One, two, three, and then two, four, and five, and one again. And the reference list is now numbered. So you can see how quickly and easy it is to reconfigure your references within your document and then reformat your document. So what if your computer is underperforming? What if you have to turn off the instant formatting? Let's turn it off now. And let's insert uh, at the end of this sentence another citation. So let's just insert that citation. Because I've turned instant formatting off, what the computer has done is inserted a citation but hasn't automatically uploaded it and updated the reference list at the end, nor has it converted the inserted citation into a format that I've requested. That's not a problem. We can carry on typing and we can finish the essay or report and right at the very end we can click on the bibliography button and say update citations and bibliography and it'll incorporate that new reference, that new citation into the document. So you can see that EndNote in combination with Microsoft Word in this instance is a very quick and easy way of inserting citations. But what if you made a mistake? What if you want to delete a citation? Let's say that reference number three here is wrong. Very easy. You can click on reference number three and delete it. Because instant formatting is turned off, it hasn't updated our reference list. If we turn instant formatting back on again, Wait a few seconds, there we are. It's updated our reference list automatically and removed reference number three. And now we're going to replace it with the right reference and it's updated automatically. So it's an incredibly quick system, incredibly efficient system, and I heartily recommend anybody who's got access to the software using it for creating their scientific documents.